Awesome, Belinda. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm super excited to share your story of your how you built your six-figure photography business. And really my goal with these spotlight interviews is to share the ups, the downs, the good times, the tough times, and really the, like, the lessons and the tips to building and being a top 1% photographer who has built a six-figure income from their passion. And I feel like this is a goal of a lot of photographers, but we really they really get stuck. And so in these interviews, I wanna highlight photographers like you and kind of share the steps that you went through because sometimes with social media, especially, it looks like you went from wanting to hit six figures to hitting six figures in like three months <laughs> or a year. And there's a lot more that goes into that. Like any business, there's a lot more of that journey. So I want to really highlight that journey and kind of what was unique for you and what worked for you so that we can share this information with our industry and really help elevate um, our industry from starving to thriving. Absolutely. So, yeah, perfect. Um, so just really to get started, I'd love to have you introduce yourself, kind of tell us who you are, where you're located, any little tidbits. Um, well, I'm Belinda Perkins, and I am located in Orlando, Florida. Um, I have a home-based studio here, and I mainly focus on boudoir. I just brought my daughter on full-time to work with me, and she's amazing. Um, and I don't know. What else do you want to know? <laughs> yeah. No, that's perfect. Um, so... I usually do this in a certain order, but I'm going to actually jump right into something that you just said, because I know it's a huge like question that I've seen a lot. And you just mentioned you have a home base studio. Yep. A lot of photographers I've heard feel like that in order to be a professional, in order to, for people to take them seriously, for it to be a legit business and them to, you know, reach their financial goals, that they need a brick and mortar studio. So what made you decide specifically that, hey, I'm going to do a home-based studio. What are the pros and cons that you've run across and what makes it work for you? Uh, okay. So initially, um, when I first went into Boudoir, I was running Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. Um, and I found that to be rather risky, mm -hmm. um, in case of cancellations or reschedules and things like that, it can be done to help get you, get your start. Um, and then from there I moved into renting time from another photographer. So mm -hmm. I was renting hours, a certain number of hours per month from another photographer's studio. Mm -hmm. um, and that, and that was great. I, I was so happy and so confident to have a studio space to, to present to my clients, but I also found that to be limiting to me, mm -hmm. um, because I was limited to a number of hours. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't want to have to limit hours. And I knew of other photographers who were making a half million a year with home-based studios. And I would say there's, with boudoir photographers, it's kind of 50-50. 50% of us have home base and 50% of us have brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? After driving all over the state and all over and flying all over the country for years doing weddings, it'd be kind of nice to be able to just get up and go to work. Yes. So I decided to try the home based to start. And I found the perfect space. I'm in a high rise in downtown Orlando. Um, and I just fell in love with it and that's what made it work for me. Will I always have this or will I eventually change? I don't know. Right now it's working. Yeah. I love that. Just what works for you. What were the things that you looked for in a live workspace when you were looking? Cause you said you went and found it after you decided that. So kind of what were the things that you were kind of looking for most? Uh, what I was looking for most was the quality of light. Uh, I wanted big, tall windows mm -hmm. and I wanted a luxury feel to the space. And when I toured a lot of the buildings here in downtown and 
my building just gave me everything that I wanted to present to my clients and the, the look, the feel, the, the light, the everything. I love that. Um, I also did a, I did a live work studio as well. And like one of the things that I did is when we were looking for a place to live when we moved to Vegas is we actually were looking for a space to have a live work studio. And once again, it was lighting, location, like the area that people were going to be coming into, were they going to feel like it was a safe and like a nice area? especially for clients who you want them to spend a bigger amount, you kind of want them to feel like they're in a place that where that, that happens, if you will. Absolutely. Uh, any, any like downsides to having a live work space that you've discovered? Um, yes, <laughs> uh, there are definitely downsides to it. Um, you know, you finish your work day and you get out and you try to cook and mm -hmm. you, you can't just leave dishes in the sink. Yeah. You can't, um, you just, you're constantly cleaning up after yourself. So it's not like you can go, oh, I'll worry about that tomorrow. No, yeah. uh, if, if you make any kind of a mess in your place, you need to clean it up before your session the next day. Yeah. So, um, so it's just a matter of like, just always keeping your space extremely tidy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's exactly, that was one of the things that same is we, when we first, when I first started um, here in Vegas, we had dogs, they've since passed, but when clients came, they had, there was no trace, like, <laughs> like you couldn't tell we had a dog or two dogs, there was no dog hair, just like, that was just one of my things, I guess, specifically is making sure that it looked super clean and professional and tidy and people be like, wait, you live here too? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, doesn't seem like it. <laughs> it's so clean. And like, make it look to, like, to where there was no dogs. Like, yeah. cause dog hair is everywhere. Yeah. How did you do that? Um, I was trained by my mother to be a very OCD cleaner. <laughs> so. Because like, dogs, they shed. And yeah, like, they do. My daughter breaks over. Um, has brought over her dog and like, I would still find dog hair like a month later. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, we do have um, all hard, hard floor, hardwood floors. Yeah, I have. Um, we have one, one room that I would shoot in as carpet, but we just keep the door shut. It was like guest bedroom slash where I would do like the bed, you know, pictures. And so I keep that door shut. The dogs didn't go in there. And then like furniture wise, we would just literally vacuum it. But before each consultation and every shoot and make sure that yeah. you know, everything was rolled or vacuumed and, and hide their dog dishes. <laughs> so I yeah. After, like on session days, I have to vacuum like three times a day without dogs. Yeah. So I have the really dark wood floors. Ah, yeah. They show everything. They're so beautiful, but they show everything, right? Yeah. Love that. Let's hop backwards a little bit because I kind of like mixed it up today. Um, let's go back to when did you first fall in love with photography and kind of what was that process? Uh, uh, <laughs> I love this story actually. Oh, I love it. It shows on your face. <laughs> um, so back in 2008, um, I'm just going to start by saying photography kind of found me. Like I didn't go looking for it. I've always loved taking pictures my whole life. Like I used to, when I was a 14 year old girl with my best friend, we'd go out into the backyard, do our hair, do our makeup, and we would pose each other in the tree and just take pictures mm -hmm. with our little disposable cameras or whatever it was we had. And, um, and then back in 2008, um, I had a friend ask me one day, so I had a really rough, um, time span in my twenties mm -hmm. because I lost both my parents and I just had a lot of things happen, um, went through a divorce and everything. So I didn't really attend weddings. I was busy raising a daughter, mm -hmm. um, and losing both my parents. I was raising my brother there for a while too. Um, so I didn't attend weddings. I did not know that people hired wedding photographers because I hadn't been to one since I was like five years old. I didn't know it was a career. Um, so I'm gonna just preface it with that. Mm -hmm. So I had a friend come to me um, and go, there's about 20 of us getting um, 
uh, that's going to attend my wedding. I want you to be there, of course. And I was wondering if you could just take pictures. We're going to go do it over on Clearwater Beach. Mm -hmm. And because I did not know to say you should hire a wedding photographer. I was just like, oh yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> so we did. And then um, this was like the start of MySpace, if I remember correctly, okay. or the tail end of MySpace before Facebook. And she had posted her photos and everybody wanted to know who her wedding photographer was. And I was just like, hmm, okay, that's kind of cool. So. Fast forward, I ended up buying a camera um, because I borrowed a camera to shoot mm -hmm. her wedding on a beach. And then I fast forward, I ended up buying a camera, signed up for art classes, just started taking pictures of friends and their kids and um, started doing maternity, led into newborns, led into engagement and weddings, led into boudoir. <laughs> That's amazing. amazing. And how long have you been shooting? Um, officially been in business since um, 2010, so we're 10 years. Okay. So you, okay, that was 2008 that you said you went to, to the wedding and, and did the shoot. What, at what point did you decide, okay, I want to go from kind of playing and enjoying myself to actually turning it into an income source or a business? So in 2010, 2011, when I, that time span, when I just said, I'm going to create a logo and I'm going to do this and I'm going to start charging. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was charging like a hundred dollars. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, so I was just like, yeah, I'll take your photos for a hundred dollars for and give you all the images. I think the first wedding I shot was um, the first official wedding that I was hired for. It was like, I charged like $300 for it. Yeah. I mean, I think we all started there for sure. Like, yeah. I mean, now there's a lot of resources out there to help you get your business started. But like back then there, there really wasn't anything. I mean, I went to photography school in high school and there was nothing about business. There was nothing about how to make money oh. <laughs> oh. or anything like that. Thankfully, the background that I came from, I was an office manager. Mm -hmm. And so I was in charge of PLs and I was in charge of accounts payable and accounts receivable. And so I kind of had a little bit of an understanding for business, but as far as some things, yeah. did I have an understanding how to run a business and how to charge? Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. That took me eight more years to learn that. Okay. So between those eight years, what happened? Like, how did you just do part-time? Did you do full-time? Were you, did you have another job? Um, so there until, until January, 2013, mm -hmm. I was, you know, one of those, what they call weekend warrior while I was uh, working full-time. Um, and so I would go out and do shoots on the weekends, weddings on the weekends, whatever it was I needed to do. And then as of January, 2013 was when I went full time. Okay. I don't even think I should have, you know, went full time. I just kind of took the plunge and said, I'm going to, I'm going to find a way to make this work. And so that was the start of the hustle. Like you find, you find ways to just keep making money and advertise and get your name out there and get more people to hire you. Um, and so I started shifting between 2011 to 2012 more into weddings. Mm -hmm. And by 2013, I was mostly only shooting weddings. Mm -hmm. And that was my life. Um, I shot probably over 400 weddings between um, 2012 to, um, December, 2018. 2018. Okay. That's a lot of weddings. <laughs> <laughs> and they weren't all mine. I'm going to say yeah. I second shot too. So yeah. if I wasn't shooting my own wedding every single weekend, I was second shooting for somebody else. And I would work Friday weddings. I would work Saturday weddings, Thursday weddings, Sunday weddings. So I actually love that you just brought that up because that's a key 
that's a really big key to, I think, expanding and growing is getting as much experience as possible and also second shooting and learning and being just in the, and maybe you don't even get paid some, I think sometimes your most valuable thing is unpaid internships or unpaid mentorships where you Absolutely. are getting paid in knowledge and experience. Um, I think a lot of photographers try to just get paid from the very beginning. And I'm like, well, you, you might need some experience under your belt before you start charging thousands of dollars. <laughs> but I mean, who am I to say that's true or not true? Yeah. But I think that that's interesting that you say that too, is that's probably a very big key to what propelled you, I would imagine. Would you agree? Yeah, I would say the biggest thing for me um, that taught me to be a better photographer was consistently and constantly working. Mm. It, it, it didn't matter if it was my own work and if I was just getting paid $50 an hour to second shoot. Um, but I was constantly involved in local photography workshops, um, attending everything I could attend to learn. And I second shot on a consistent basis for a lot of the photographers throughout Central Florida. Um, so I, you know, I always learned something with every single wedding, even clear up into 2018, 2019, there was never a wedding that didn't teach me something new. Like I would learn a new angle to capture something better, you know, shoot through the candles and get that cake, you know, in a different lighting and different setting. Like I constantly followed other photographers going, I like their artistic style and I like how they think outside the box. So I put a lot of pressure on myself to always think outside the box with every wedding that I was privileged to photograph to oh, I love that. say, how what, can I look at this from another angle? Yeah, I love that. What's one thing that you wish you had known when you began your photography business? How to charge. <laughs> how to, how to properly charge and how, I mean, honestly, the way I do it was the way it was done for, for many, many years before the digital era. So, um, you know, I constantly felt like I was spinning my wheels and that I was never able to, to build a retirement, um, with, you know, just the way, with just a simple fact of the way I was charging before. Got it. Perfect. And you said it took you eight years to figure out what to charge? Yes. How did, <laughs> how did you survive eight years in the industry? Because I'm a hustler. And like I said, I second shot and mm -hmm. like I filled my calendar. I picked up every type of shoot I could pick up. Um, eventually got to the point where I was like, okay, I don't really like newborns. So not that I don't like newborns, yeah. um, don't like photographing newborns. Um, so I was like, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm going to focus more on this stuff. So I left a realm of things that I would photograph, but I picked up everything I could. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> hustling. I like that. Just hustling and, and figuring it out and like finding ways to do it. How did you find clients in the beginning? Um, I would say mostly word of mouth and social media. Um, I advertised on Wedding Wire. I advertised on The Knot. Um, do styled shoots, you know, meet, you know, by meeting with other wedding vendors in your industry and things like that. So I would say that's mostly what it was. And I always had a close knit group of Central Florida photographers and so we would always pass leads back and forth oh you're booked for this date oh I have this so awesome so kind of a little bit of networking little word of mouth and also a little bit of paid advertising and mm -hmm. in the right places <laughs> yeah, love that what would you say was the like the toughest part of building your photography business um learning um like I love education so I would and so I say that was the toughest part but it wasn't it was the most enjoyable part but sometimes I feel like I would shut everything out around me and I would dive into the computer and um join 
every workshop I could. So sometimes I think that um, kind of shut away my family a little bit, but I was just so in tune with learning. So sometimes it's a matter of learning to just try to keep a balance. Yeah, man, that word that I think actually doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 want it to but i'm not sure that it does but it is definitely a delicate a delicate uh attempt <laughs> hard. Sure. It's so hard because when you're passionate about something you want nothing more than to soak every ounce of education you can about the subject and yeah see where it takes you and what you can learn from it yeah so you do exclusively boudoir photography now correct Okay. I do still have some people who call me up and say, hey, will you shoot my family or, um, you know, little things here and there, the, my high school senior daughter or something. Yeah. Like special, special allowances. I love that. Yeah. But um, I don't market for those and I don't, Yeah, I, I wouldn't even be able to fit them in right now. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, okay. So let's hop to, when was it that you kind of switched over to boudoir full time? Um, that was October, the end of October, 2018 was, I had, um, seen something posted in a group mm -hmm. about a friend. And so I reached out to the friend and I said, tell me more about this. And it was an education program that she had joined. And so I said, okay, I said, well, let me try this. And so I did it. And, um, I had already shot some boudoir mm -hmm. in years prior and tried marketing for it. And it was so hard. Like I was giving away the farm for such a small price, including hair and makeup. And like, nobody would ever book me. And I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong here. And so I did learn and take away some things from that education experience. Um, but then I ended up finding a mentor Okay. who showed me the light and showed me the way and my life has been forever changed yeah what what um how did you decide to get a mentor what was so it? probably about a year prior to this in 2017 mm -hmm. I was in um my my the person who mentored me I was in a group of hers okay and I didn't even realize I was, or maybe it was another group. I didn't even realize I was. And I saw these crazy numbers and I was like, I don't know how she does that. I honestly don't believe that that's even possible. And I just kind of ignored it for a year, went on about my business, kept on shooting weddings. And um, then when I went into the other education program back at the end of October of 2018, I even said then, I was like, nobody's ever going to pay this. <laughs> and, I, and I laughed. And um, then I was like, okay, people do. Wow. Really? So you can do IPS. So basically, you know, it's learning IPS okay. and how to make that work. And, um, and people will pay it, will pay your prices if it's done right. And then... Um, when I realized that I was not in the correct program for me, mm -hmm. um, I started thinking about that lady's post mm -hmm. in this one particular group from a year prior. And I just looked at, I just typed it into Facebook again and brought it back up. And I just reached out to her and I said, how much would it be for you to mentor me? <laughs> and she told me your price and I said, okay, done. Like, and she, um, we talked for about an hour on how to do bridal shows. I had a bridal show coming up in two weeks and I booked 18 clients. So. That was definitely. And, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> What's like, what would you say is the biggest thing that you took away from that mentorship? Um, proper pricing and a nice pricing guide. Of, okay how to make everything work. Okay. And what did that do for you in your business? Like, do you just felt like you got paid more? Do you feel like you were more confident? You had more understanding? Like, 
Um, you felt more professional? I, don't know. I felt more professional. I felt more confident with my pricing, but that still took a while. Like there, there for those first six months or so of, of going into that, I was like, I just don't understand why people are paying me this. Like, I don't, I didn't really understand it. And like, I probably would have given up after December from the other education program if um, I didn't have this one girl break into tears and cry in front of me and say, I can't believe these photos are me. And that's when I was like, oh gosh, I belong here. But at the same time, I didn't feel worthy of charging appropriately. Yeah. Oh, I love that. I love, I love that you shared that because I think and you're talking about boudoir specifically? Yeah. I have I have a sneaking suspicion. You know, I've worked with a lot of boudoir photographers and, and one myself that all of us that really connect with boudoir have a self journey to self-worth. And that's why we love it so much is because we're in we're on that journey of discovering our own worthiness. And part of, I think, that healing process that we've discovered is helping other women on that journey. I know we're both getting teary-eyed. <laughs> so anybody watching this, if you haven't shot boudoir before, it is very emotional and just incredible um, Absolutely. genre to be a you part of. That first client that breaks into tears, you're just like, whoa, like, yeah. what you're giving them is such an amazing gift. Yeah. yeah, for them just to see themselves in a different light and see themselves like other people. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. Let it go. Um, I love that. Just being real and raw. And it is true. It's, it's a life changing moment. And like, I think a lot like photography, boudoir specifically has something very special and dear to our hearts, obviously, but I think photography in general is something that people don't understand. Most people don't understand the value of what it is. And yeah. I think sometimes photographers don't even, it's something they love, but they don't understand what photography actually does for people um, and how life-changing it is. And I always say like, I don't know if people know this, but you have brain synapses that connect when you learn things and you have memories, but the more you learn and the more memories you make, those brain synapses break for something in the past to reconnect for something, you know, new learning or new memories. And so a photograph can actually reconnect a synapsis and bring back a memory that would be otherwise forever forgotten. And I'm like, that is absolutely priceless. Like what, what a photograph can do. So I love that. Um, so you got a mentor, you've got a pricing that was for weddings, right? And then uh, the proper pricing was for boudoir. Okay. It was for boudoir. Okay. Perfect. And then what would you say was the turning point for you in your business? Like, was there a specific point where it was just like things fell into place or you had an aha moment and you're like, holy shit this is a serious business. I can, I can do whatever I imagine and dream of. Absolutely. So following that, you know, almost six months later, I um, was going through a breakup with my boyfriend. I was still running um, studio hours um, from another photographer here in central Florida. And I was like, okay, I need to move out of my boyfriend's house and I need to make this work. And that's when I went seeking my home base studio. And so that was part of what propelled me to where I'm at now. Um, found the perfect place. And I posted in groups and I said, I need help figuring out how to get clients on the group or not clients in the group, uh, clients on the books. Yeah. Um, like at that point in time, I only had like maybe seven clients, um, scheduled and I, uh, one of my photographer friends, boudoir photographer friends said, here, do this. And she showed me the ropes on how to run a promotion, um, that worked and I did. 
and I ended up booking out my books completely fully full months for three months and sporadic bookings after that for another three months. And then I ran another promotion three months later and ended up booking out the rest of my year. And then that's when I found you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and you have helped me stay booked ever since. <laughs> So what would you, so you would say that kind of that turning point was marketing? Yes. Just, um, like when you are put in a place where, and you know, you don't want to fail. Like I never wanted to have anybody come back and say, I told you so I told you you shouldn't do this or anything like that. I, I wanted to feel like I can do this. Mm. I, you know, I'm oh, where I moved into was an extremely expensive place that I would have never normally done. But I just, I had a belief in me that I can make this work. And I did. And I ended up filling up my books completely. Oh, I'm getting teary eyed because I'm relating right now is because when we moved, um, we built a, like we had 47 rental properties going into 2008. We lost, we had an over a million dollar net worth on paper, you know, between assets and everything, not liquid, but in assets, lost all of it. We're hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. Universe totally like brought this into being, but we moved to Vegas. <laughs> and I still remember like we knew two people, my brother and his wife at that time, brand new city, didn't know anybody, but I was so determined that I was not going to have to move back to Oklahoma with my tail between my legs. I was like, I, we have to make, we didn't have jobs. I was basically starting my boudoir photography business over in Vegas, like from nothing. And I was like, I have to make it work. I was like, I refuse to fail. Like you said, I refuse to, to, I refuse to go back with my tail between my legs. I like, and, and we did like, like we definitely made it happen. It wasn't easy necessarily, but I totally relate to that. And that, that desire, that passion, that commitment, that drive to, I don't know, be your own hero, I guess. <laughs> I think there's just something about like when you run your own business and and you've learned that hustle of what needs to be done you're willing to do anything but it also comes with because you love what you do so much so yeah. you have to have the combination of both you have to love what you do you have to have that hustle you have to have that drive to where you just keep going and you don't stop like I can't tell you how many times I worked until two, three o'clock in the morning and had to get up at six, seven o'clock in the morning and start working again. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, well, obviously you, you fell in love with, or you fell in love with photography in the sense of maybe wanting to do it in what, 2000, you said 2008. Yeah. And then would, what would you say? Like, when did you really feel like you had hit that moment where you're like, okay, I'm actually a successful photographer. Like I have a successful business. Um, where I felt like I knew what I was doing as far as shooting and loving what I was doing and that I felt like I belonged was probably around 2014, 2015. Yeah. Uh, was I financially there? That didn't happen until like way later on. So that was yeah. in the past couple of years. Yeah. I love, I love the fact that like, I don't want people to watch, I want these interviews to be inspiring, but I also want them to be real and raw because we live in a day and age where everybody, we're just so used to instantaneous gratification. We get really kind of like puzzled or upset or kind of just like, wait, what the heck when I'm, when you don't get results, like immediately but I want, it, I want people to understand that there is a journey that goes along with getting success and, get, and hitting those goals. And it takes that perseverance and that drive and that commitment. And like you said, that passion to get there. And it doesn't necessarily happen overnight, but I, I think you would probably agree that each phase 
has a very like specific and valuable lessons that you learn that often can you skip some of the heartaches and the mistakes for sure I mean that's why there's educators now right (laughs) but I still think that it's part of that that struggle where sometimes you just have to figure it out or you just have to spend till 2 a.m or 3 a.m in the morning that really makes it so you hit that successful level like there's just some sort of I don't want to say toll but kind of a toll that you pay absolutely I feel like everything that I've ever photographed everything that I've ever done every moment leading up to this has has been because I was persistent but it's has taught me so much like I I wouldn't take back any part of my journey. I wouldn't have rushed any part of my journey. I loved learning everything I learned along the way. Um, Like weddings was, weddings gave me everything I needed in the time that that I needed it. Like I told you, I lost, and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna get teary eyed about this too, but I lost my dad when I was 18 and I lost my mom when I was 22. And so I didn't have family. Um, My parents moved to Central Florida when I was five years old. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City, Missouri. And so I've never had family here. Uh, My friends have become my family. But what I got out of weddings, I got so much joy out of weddings during the years that I shot it. Like, I felt like I had family, even if it was just for a day. Mm-hmm. Just by me getting to be there and be privileged to capture those moments for the, for these couples. Yeah. Um, and then when I discovered Boudoir and what it gave women, I felt like I was exactly where I belonged in, in this stage of my life now. Mm-hmm. I love that. I love too that you pointed out that this was not a money endeavor for you. It was a, it was, it was a love, a love project, a love passion and something that you truly connected with. And obviously that you did, cause that's what you needed. You know, you needed that. It was what my soul needed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think that's a great point too, for anyone watching is like, and I think you, you expressed this earlier, like you have to be passionate about what it is that you're doing first and foremost. And I think that's key number one. Key number two I might offer would be if you're going to do it as a business, like knowing how to do a business, like getting the education and the information to get the processes and systems and how to set up, how to charge, like all of those things. Right. And then third would just be the persistence and the like commitment and not giving up even in the hard times and understanding the hard times are actually where we get the most is because that's when we're learning and really embracing that but letting go of the money actually lets the money flow in way quicker and way faster is when it's not like hey I need to hit this specific number it's like how, how can I change someone's life or how can I create like an amazing experience or a product? So I love that you brought that up. That's fantastic. Yeah, me all teary eyed now. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just because we're so passionate about what we do. I love it though. I love that. And, and I think that it's great for people to be able to see the real and the raw and like connect with that. What do you, what would you say um, is the biggest part of your business that you spend the most time on or the part of your business that you spend the most time on? Um, I would say editing. Um, and I don't even do the main portion of the edit, but I do the final edits. There's not a single photo that ever goes out to a client that doesn't cross uh, my lap first, you know, like I will go back and I will do all the final edits. I go back and review everything. And then I would say the other part is probably social media. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have people in place that um, 
that help with the social media scheduling and everything. Um, but there's just a lot that goes into everything. Um, like I'm terrible about blogging. If you look at my website, I don't have any blogs hardly. <laughs> but I have this whole list of all these blog ideas. And I was just going over that today with my daughter. And I was like, we really got to get blogging. <laughs> like, <laughs> You really need to do that. Oh, I need, and I mean, obviously you're doing great, but there's always, there's always a to-do list, right? It never ends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. What, what would you say is like the biggest mistake that you're seeing other photographers make as they're trying to build their business that you're just like, oh, don't do that. <laughs> um. So I would say learning how to properly charge. So um, for instance, I was on Instagram earlier mm -hmm. and I saw um, a story talking about buying um, somebody's couple's um, bourgeois posing thing. Mm -hmm. I love um, couple's bourgeois and I have been offering it. And I was like, well, let me just go look at and see what this is all about. So, so I did, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and I went to the person's website and clicked on pricing and I just saw their pricing and they basically give away the farm for like $500 or something mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, oh, so, and they were really good. Like this photographer was so talented. And I was like, would it be inappropriate for me to reach out to her and say something? Probably. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I think it's fascinating too, is because I think this is the hardest thing about charging and, and one of the things that I, I share when we, when I talk about pricing is, is like, you can't really look at what everybody else is doing to determine how to charge because you don't even know if that person's doing it as a business, they're doing it as a hobby. They're doing it as a, like, I'm a full-time mom. My husband makes all the money, but I'd like to have something of my own, but I'm not really in it for the money part of it. And so they're just throwing something on there that makes them feel happy for whatever they invested or their husband's like, sure, run a business. That's cool. Just cover your expenses. And they're not worried. Right. And so right. it's so fascinating just to make sure that like, Sure, I think you still could have been like, um, hey, if you guys, if you're trying to do this as a business, you're probably charging too low. You're really good at what you do. Like, I love that. But I just like when we're pricing ourselves, it's so fascinating because I think the old school way of doing it is just seeing like what the average is around us and then kind of like choosing that. <laughs> if we yeah. think that we're in that in that realm of of like skill level, like finding a couple of photographers that we feel like we're in line with, with our skill and then choosing that versus pricing ourselves specifically for our goals, our area, our expenses. So yeah, yeah I love that. Um, so the top three, I know we kind of talked about a little bit, top three resources that have helped you along the way. And you can name drop, this can be podcasts, books, mentors, programs, workshops, um, any, anything I'm, um, so I would say, um, you for helping me market <laughs> and everything that you have taught me there. Um, and also Jen, um, Bruno Smith, um, she was my mentor. She has taught me so much. She has a mastermind program. Um, and I read countless books. I can't think of anything though right now. Off the top of your head, yeah, <laughs> yeah. What would you feel like has been um, the biggest thing that you you pulled away from each of those resources? <sighs> Learning how to just be more confident in my business and um, how to run it appropriately as a business. Learning how to market consistently, learning how to connect with my clients on um, a deeper level. Um, just so many things, like everything. Yeah. I, I just can't even express, like, I, I feel like I have done a full 180 revamp 
reconstructive surgery to my business over the last couple of years. So, yeah, I love that. And what were you making before you did like invested in that? And I'm assuming you invest, you, you did say you paid your mentor. Um, what were you making? If you don't mind sharing, what were you making before versus now? Um, so before all of this, I was probably, I think on my best year was like maybe 60,000. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my, uh, once I got proper education mm-hmm. and in my first year after that, I did, do you want numbers? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think this is great for people to see. Okay. Yeah, I did um, 170,000. Um, and then my, this past year, it was over 400. Shut up. Ah! Can I just give you a, <laughs> yay. Your fingers. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, I love that. And so the investment and the time is just, was completely worth it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. So I know we're a little bit over. I usually try to keep these for 30 minutes, but um, you had so much to share and I know everybody's going to love it, but I'm going to close with one last question. And that is what is one piece of advice that you would give other photographers who are either just starting out in their photography business or they're currently building their photography business, but they're feeling stuck and they're not really, they're like, I'm, I keep trying, but I can't hit that next level. Hire a mentor. Um, don't give up. Persevere. If it's something you love, just keep following your passion. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. And I know everybody's going to love hearing all these tidbits and tools and secrets that you've shared with us today. Thank you, Belinda. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.